Hello everyone who's here and who's joined us online. It's a great pleasure to see you today. I'd like to start off by thanking MRPH Connect for inviting me today and giving me the opportunity to share my experiences with you all. Today I'm going to speak to you about the cultural differences and how I overcame the feeling of feeling ashamed about my diagnosis. I will also share why I became a public MRK advocate when many from a similar background remain quiet. Now, let's rewind back in time. Mm -hmm. The story began on January 31st, 1989, when this precious little baby <laughs> entered this world. Everything looked great, and I lived a happy childhood. I used to be really quiet and shy throughout my childhood and teenage years, so you can imagine how difficult it was for me as a shy person to become public. In year five, when I was age 10, girls and boys were separated in my class to be given the growing up talk. However, keep in mind, I attended a faith-based school. They did not explain the topic very openly and only briefly discussed it for the modesty. Time passed quickly and before I knew it, I was in the secondary school. Although periods were part of the biology year seven curriculum, that part was not taught or discussed until I was in year nine. So I self-educated using the science textbook <laughs> and online website. I also did ask my mom and sister about periods. I was very naive and clueless about the topic. I felt like I needed to learn more about the female anatomy, hence why I self-educated. Traditionally and culturally, even a British Asian household did not usually openly discuss this topic. However, it's pleasing to see that this trend is now somewhat starting to change. So, at the age of around 13 slash 14, as I had not started my period, I started getting questioned by girls in my class about periods. I went to a small faith-based girl school, and when you're on your period, you don't join the congregational prayers. Therefore, it really made me stand out that I did not get my period as I was praying daily. One day, a girl randomly said to me after prayer one day, do you want children? Do you know you can't have children without your period? What if you never get your period? I was very much taken aback by what I was asked and thought that's not even possible. Mm -hmm. Little did I know it was indeed possible and soon that is exactly what I was told. When I was 14, I went to visit family in Pakistan, and I remember family members finding it strange that I had not yet started my period. Once I returned to the UK, my mum my mom booked a GP appointment thinking perhaps polycystic ovary syndrome was the reason, as I had persistent excess paper. My GP suspected I had MRKH, as he had come across a case before, but never said anything to us and referred me to Queen Chelsea and Charlotte Hospital. I was fortunate to be sent directly there. So after blood tests, ultrasound and MRI scan, I was quickly got diagnosed with MRKH. It was shocking news to me, mom and sister, who were all present at my final appointment. My mom said it was like a bombshell had hit her head. I just remember feeling completely dazed and not really taking in what they were saying to me. No 14 year old ever expects to be told that they are not able to have children in the future. Immediately, we were introduced to the psychologist who asked me how I was. I said I was fine when actually we were all torn apart, but we got on a great thing. And just in a state of shock as we were still absorbing the information. After this, when my mum had an appointment, our GP, who was of a similar background to our family and of Indian heritage, mentioned don't tell anybody and just get her married. Despite being here in the UK, he had a very cultural mindset. My mom also advised me to keep quiet about the topic of my peers, mainly for my protection, as they may not be very understanding, supportive, and may say hurtful remarks, as teenage girls can so very often do. So I felt like this secret was mainly kept to myself, but I did disclose to a few friends who were extremely supportive. One friend in year 10 would, mis would whisper to me, are you okay? Do you want me to change the topic whenever the period topic would come up? My religion, Islam, sets puberty as the point from which we are considered accountable for our action as responsible adults. So it's the time 
you are officially considered to become a woman. Without periods, I was deaf being locked and even questioning if I was a complete woman. However, I realize now not having periods or missing your reproductive system does not make you any less of a woman. I later began, even from a religious point of view, despite periods being the most common factor, there are other markers considered as a person pushing puberty. So from my religion point of view too, I was a complete woman. Understanding my religion better as I went on, and especially starting to see how my culture differed from the true teaching of my religion, went on to become my greatest strength that I drew upon to get me through when things got really tough. So now I'll be moving on to what made me go public when so many from a similar background remain quiet. I went to Queen Chelsea and Charlotte Hospital support groups regularly, but I remained silent and quiet and I couldn't speak up. Although there's a room full of MRP ladies, I didn't see anybody from a similar background as me in Muslim Asian. With this background, as I've explained, there's an added dimension to dealing with MRK hate, and I felt that was missing from our community at that time. I'm happy to see that's improving now. However, I did join a private online support group on a website, and that was helpful, but I remained anonymous and only used my initial initials AK. After that, I used the alias Mariam Khan on a Facebook page initially to keep private. I was too afraid back then for anyone I need to find out about my diagnosis and I was worried what they would think of me. Now moving on to what helped me feel more comfortable about my diagnosis. Moving on to November 2020, I was invited to speak on a podcast called Her Story Inspired. Mm -hmm. And this was the turning point and when I finally found my voice. That was a massive step for me, but until the last minute, I was in two minds about going public. I wondered if this is slightly permissible for me to talk about this topic. Then, on one episode on Her Story Inspired, I heard a Muslim vaginist coach share her story, and that gave me the confidence and courage to share my MRK journey publicly. I feel we need more representation to the existing man and change. I want to be the voice for my Muslim MRK system. Mm -hmm. This is something I feel so passionately about, and now I regularly do blogs, blogs, interviews about MRK, and I even host my own lab about it. I get many DMs from similar background systems, saying they find comfort, support, and inspiration in me sharing my journey. Mm. It's taken years of work to get here, and I've used a variety of modalities, including Somali, which is coaching by an MRP coach. I also had Mizar therapy, which is a type of massage therapy of the abdomen. For me, it's really important to have a strong spiritual background. For this reason, I attend weekly standard classes and occasionally deliver talks to you. This really gives me a spiritual boost and provides me with immense comfort. I find praying to Allah, God, and seeing various examples in the Quran helps. For example, Prophet Abraham and his wife Sarah had a baby in their old age. Prophet Zachariah, Zachariah in Arabic, also had a baby after he saw Mary as a baby and he prayed to Allah, God, that even though he was 100 years old and his wife was barren, to grant him his own child. Allah, God says be and it is. Like Prophet Isa, Jesus, miracle of birth without a father. And also, I, I feel you just have to fall under this category. So this gives me the hope that anything is possible. I found it consoling that the concept of being barren is clearly acknowledged in the Quran and not a hidden topic. Mm -hmm. It also says, he creates you as he will. So this helps remind me, we are all created differently and there's a reason for it and we all have different paths we walk in life. I'm blessed to have support of family and friends who are always there for me to have a shoulder to cry on, uplift me and go to support groups with me. My lovely mom is here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Having that support and encouragement has really helped me get me to the stage where I am. Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah God and I'm really grateful for this. In university, I had a friend say to me, in her eyes, I'm a diamond, but she wanted me to shine and the way she saw me, but felt there's something blocking my way. Connecting to child is not by choice and following different women's journey with illness has been really empowering to see. Gratitude journaling has been handy too. In the Quran, there's a quote that says, 
If you're grateful, Allah will increase your favors. I try and focus and enjoy what I do have because there's so many things with us to appreciate and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Together, everyone achieves more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the journey isn't over, but knowing I've got my faith, family, friends, and MRK sisters, I know together we're stronger and we've got this. I really have seen the power in uh, collaboration and the amazing things we can do together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to, and once again, by thanking MRK Connect for this opportunity. Thank you for listening. I'd like to open the floor for any questions or comments. Thank you.